Our next session is brought to you by SNB and BIS Innovation Hub. And in a few moments, we are having Andrea M. Mackler, member of the SNB Governing Board, and Benoit Curie, head of BIS Innovation Hub, to share on Central Banker's innovative role. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session on the topic of the role of central banks when it comes to innovation, followed by a panel discussion on the implications of asset tokenization, stable coins, and central bank digital currencies for financial markets. I'm Tanya Koenig, and I'm very pleased to guide you throughout the next hour. Our first keynote speaker is the head of the BIS Innovation Hub. Benoit Curé, the stage is yours. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, I am very pleased to uh, to be speaking at this global event, uh, straddling Singapore and Switzerland. What makes it special for me uh, is that the Innovation Hub is local uh, in both leading financial centers. We established offices in Switzerland and in Singapore last year, together with a, another office in Hong Kong. And yet, uh, just like any good startup, uh, we are expanding. By this time next year, uh, we plan to have centers in Toronto, in London, uh, in Stockholm, and in Paris and Frankfurt as well as a strategic partnership with the Federal Reserve System uh, in New York. So, uh, although we haven't been around for very long, uh, we've been very busy. And this session will showcase one of our first reports, uh, the result of a collaboration with our partners, the Swiss National Bank, and six. The report uh, details not one, but two proofs of concepts, and it's called uh, Project Helvetia. But before we get on to Project Helvetia, uh, I want to talk for five minutes about central banks and innovation. In many minds, uh, these are still somewhat at odds. And that's not unreasonable. Uh, but if that describes your mind, uh, I want to convince you otherwise. First, central banks have mandates to anchor stability, monetary and financial stability. With that comes a natural inclination towards conserv conservatism and caution. And that's true. Yet, uh, when central banks intervene to steady the economy, the economic ship uh, in rough seas, uh, they can be brave and resourceful. As the saying goes, life's rough, roughest storms prove the strength of our anchors. And from the maelstroms of the financial crisis 10 years ago to fighting the waves uh, for global pandemic, there have been few days of calm for the financial system. It was maybe easy to miss, uh, yet central bank responses to both crises were e extraordinarily innovative. New ways were found to get liquidity to all corners of the financial system. Swap lines were organized to smooth cross-border funding. New monetary policies were launched on a massive scale. Novel market operations were implemented almost overnight. How quickly those cautious central banks moved to steady the ship. It wasn't easy. I know firsthand the difficulties of taking new and untested approaches during a crisis. Sometimes you don't have to change much. The Outright Monetary Transactions program of the, of the ECB, OMT, was called by some the most efficient monetary policy instrument ever because it never had to be used. Nonetheless, the intuitive view of innovation is different. Innovation is all about change. I'm talking about Schumpeter's creative destruction or early Zuckerberg's moving fast and breaking things. And while, while the dramas of the last decade raged, this change has reshaped our world, and fast. That widespread dig digitalization is altering our life. That's undisputable. To say that it's happening ever faster is a cliche, but it's nevertheless true. While COVID-19 presents an immediate economic challenge, it has also shown how quickly longer running digitalization trends can accelerate, and we, we've heard about it uh, on the last uh, panel. This calls for a different response by central banks. This is not a crisis, it's evolution. Yet, speed is it's still of the essence. The world and the financial system are changing. Central banks need to understand these changes and have enough flexibility to respond to them. And we can see this in our work on central bank digital currency, or CBDC. The BIS and a group of central banks, including the SNB, published a report in October setting principles uh, for retail CBDC the first principle was the preservation of monetary and financial stability. Disruptive innovation, the kind that breaks things, is contrary to central banks' public policy objectives. Central banks abide by the monetary equivalent of the uh, Hippocratic Oath. First, they do not harm. 
But the challenge remains. Central banks must move, must move fast if they are to have the flexibility to evolve in this new system, to evolve so that they can continue to provide trusted money, a common public good. Yet, how can this be combined with safety? The answer is always through cooperation. That brings me to the BIS. At the Bank for International Settlements, we are celebrating our 90th birthday this year. 90, not 19, 90. Our history is a history of cooperation where central banks meet to coordinate and promote global monetary and financial stability. In this context, it is natural and arguably it is necessary for the BIS to set up its own innovation hub to gain a deep understanding of new technologies, to share and pool knowledge internationally and to explore how we can develop tangible public goods for our community. As I said at the start, we are global, but we are also local. I am speaking at the Singapore FinTech Festival from Europe to an audience from all corners of the globe. That mirrors one of the greatest opportunities and challenges of new technologies. They do not recognize borders. The strategic themes of the Innovation Hub are global and matter to everyone. Effective financial supervision, modern payments and banking, data platforms, cyber resilience, uh, green finance, and of course, CBDCs. By pooling our knowledge, we can all benefit and move faster together. By cooperating, we can do safely together. By bringing together public authorities, we can harness innovation that benefits the many and not the few. When it comes to CBDC, Project Elvetia is the first deliverable under the Innovation Hub CBDC work plan. The second phase will explore cross-border issues for CBDC in accord with the G20 roadmap for improving cross-border payments. Our centers in Hong Kong and Singapore are also looking at these issues. While no one really knows if distributed ledger technology, DLT, is the future, the technology is now mature enough for the private sector to uh, look and put it into production. Examples include SDX, also the recently renamed DM. At the Innovation Hub, we are building our own capabilities to conduct experimentation on DLT. It's easy to move fast and break things. Not breaking things is more difficult. To do the latter, we need to move together. And that is why central banks are doing. Project Helvetia is an excellent example of this and marks just the beginning of the further evolution of central banking. Central banks are pragmatic innovators. We are innovating because we have to deliver on our mandates and because it is our job to maintain trust in our currencies. It was John Kenneth Galbraith who said, the, en the enemy of the conventional wisdom is not ideas, but the march of events. Central banks are open to new ideas, and they're not planning on being overtaken by events. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your interesting insights and congratulations on this exciting collaboration with the Swiss National Bank and Six Group. So I have a question for you. The Innovation Hub is one example where central banks are uh, trying to do things differently. But from an alternative perspective, how do you see technology changing central banks in the future? So... That's a great question. It's a great question because I don't have the answer, <laughs> uh, but we need to prepare for it non nonetheless, so we have to think about it. Um, and um, I would think of at least three ways in, in, in which innovation will change the way uh, central banks operate. Uh, one is, is known, and it's about um, making new instruments available. So to give you some examples, we can use now uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning to improve bank supervision. Mm -hmm. uh, we can automate uh, data provision in bank supervision. Uh, we can use um, real life streaming to understand better what's going on on financial markets. And mm -hmm. we do have a project in the Swiss center mm -hmm. uh, uh, on called Rio mm -hmm. on uh, uh, providing live information on the, on the FX market. Okay. Uh, so that's about instruments. Mm -hmm. Second is about the culture and the skills and the people. Innovation can help us bring new people uh, into the central bank universe, and it can help us change our mindset so that we can challenge uh, established ideas and so that we can uh, allow ourselves to, uh, to fail fast and fail forward, which is the essence of what innovation is about. And the last one is more uncertain, but nevertheless important, and it's about uh, financial structures. 
Digitalization is changing financial structures, and in many aspects, it is blurring the boundary between banks and non-banks. Mm -hmm. And it might have to, uh, it might change the way central banks implement uh, their policies, including monetary policy, in a in a dig digitalized environment. Mm -hmm. So the first one are known knowns, if you want. The last one is a is a known unknown, uh, and there are many unknowns unknowns, which we'll see soon in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Benoit Curé, head of the BIS Innovation Hub. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'd like to hear the perspective of the Swiss National Bank. Therefore, uh, I'd like to welcome Andrea Mechler. She's a member of the SMB Governing Board here on stage for her keynote speech. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizers of the Singapore fin FinTech Festival Satellite Event Switzerland for the kind invitation. In the next few minutes, I will build on Benoit Curie's remarks and talk about Project Helvetia. My talk addresses the following four questions. Why is Project Helvetia important for central banks and hence for the Swiss National Bank, the SNB? What have we done in the context of this project? Which core insights have we gained and what comes next? First, why is Project Helvetia important? A statutory task of many central banks is to facilitate and secure the operations of cashless payments. The SNB fulfills this task by commissioning SIX to operate the most important payment system in Switzerland, the real-time gross settlement system, SIC, SIC, in which payments are settled in central bank money. Like many other central banks, the SNB must also contribute to the stability of the financial system, including financial market infrastructures. Technological change is shaping the way we perform our tasks in these two areas, but that's not exactly new. What is unusual today, as Benoit already mentioned, is the scale and the speed of technological change. The private sector is investing heavily in distributed ledger technology, DLT, and tokenization for wholesale applications. This process could very well transform how financial markets are organized in the future. Three particular changes are worth highlighting. Automation, speed, and decentralization. First on automation, securities and cash could take the form of tokenized assets, supporting programmable, programmable business logic, or so-called smart assets, to improve existing post-trading processes by automation or to enable completely new services. Second on speed, the trading and settlement of tokenized assets on a DLT-based infrastructure would enable atomic and instantaneous settlement increasing not only speed, but reducing costs by rendering the need for a central counterparty obsolete. Third, on decentralization, the underlying distributed ledger technology may enable financial market infrastructures to become more decentralized, enabling transactions to be conducted peer-to-peer -peer and potentially adding to the robustness of today's infrastructures. In case DLT and tokenization can deliver significant improvements over existing technologies, central banks must understand the potential impact on the financial system. This is why the SNB decided to join forces with the BIS Innovation Hub and SIX for Project Helvetia. The key question we addressed in the project is how to settle in central bank money tokenized assets exchanged on a DLT-based financial market infrastructure. Settlement in central bank money, which in Switzerland takes place in the SIC SIC system, enhances the security, efficiency, and stability of the financial system as central bank money, by definition, bears no credit risk. Second, what have we done so far? In what we have come to call the first phase of Project Helvetia, 
we investigated two approaches to integrating central bank money into the DLT-based financial market infrastructure of the Six Digital Exchange, or SDX, in short. This is illustrated in slide one. Both approaches were explored in the form of proofs of concepts, POCs, which leveraged the live SIC and the near live SDX test platforms. In the first approach, referred to as POC1, the central bank, in this case the SNB, issues a wholesale central bank digital currency, wholesale CBDC. This approach allows a fully integrated settlement of a securities transactions, both the delivery of the securities and the payment in wholesale CBDC on the DLT platform. In the second approach, referred to as POC2, an interface between the DLT platform and the real-time growth settlement system, the RTGS, is established. While the securities leg is settled on the DLT platform, the cash leg remains within today's RTGS. What have we learned? Project Helvetia was a success. It showed in a realistic, near-life setting that it is possible to provide central bank money to settle tokenized assets using both approaches. In addition, the analysis showed that the transfer of wholesale CBDC can be designed to be legally robust under Swiss civil law. Comparing the two POCs reveals different benefits and challenges. This is shown in slide two. The advantage of creating a wholesale CBDC is that the functionalities possible with tokenization can be fully leveraged. In this sense, the first approach is the more innovative and comprehensive solution. Yet, issuing a wholesale CBDC that enables all of these possibilities would also bring new operational challenges and raise novel policy and governance questions for central banks. The second approach is closer to the status quo and thus less disruptive and the impact on other areas is accordingly less pronounced. But limiting functionalities may also imply foregoing efficiency gains. Fourth, what comes next? The final report on the first phase of Project Helvetia was published just last week. Despite the success of the project, several important issues still need to be addressed. Just because a central bank can do something does not mean it should. Project Helvetia is a first step towards developing a broader and more complete understanding of the wider implication for the financial system and the role of central bank money in any future system. The process for continuing this work as part of phase two of Project Helvetia is already underway. As was the case in the now concluded first phase, phase two will be exploratory in nature and as such will not allow the drawing of any conclusion regarding future decisions either for or against the introduction of a wholesale CBDC in Switzerland. Ladies and gentlemen, at present, Switzerland's financial market infrastructure is reliable robust and efficient. Irrespective of the technology that will ultimately prevail, for a central bank such as the SNB, one thing is crucial. The high level of security and reliability of the country's financial market infrastructure must be safeguarded under all circumstances. Project Helvetia is genuinely helping the entire central bank community to gain new insights and develop expertise. It thereby helps us to continue to pursue our statutory task in the fields of payments 
and financial stability with cutting edge technology, even in a rapidly changing world. Thank you for your interest and attention.